Let's look at how time series data is represented before we get into how to actually make use of it in machine learning models. So this notebook that I have here, the link to it is in the description of the video. First thing I do is just set up some preliminaries to see what type of GPU or Apple acceleration that we have. And we're gonna just start to look at how we represent this sort of data. It's multi-dimensional data because we're dealing now with sequences. Rather than just sending a single variable into the model, we are sending multiple values as something changes over time. We may be observing multiple things that are changing over time. Maybe you wanna monitor the Dow 30 stocks, multiple securities to see how altogether they influence uh, maybe the rate of the S&P 500, I don't know, I'm, I'm just making that up, but you, you can put together multiple inputs to help predict some. The axes here become very important. Usually the first axis is the train set elements or the sequences. So dimension one or dimension zero, if you think about it, this is just your individual training, training elements. This is not through time, this is just one sample where we've seen a number of time series elements that resulted in some value that we want to predict. Axis two is where we uh, get into the, the, the sequences through time. So now you're dealing with time slices. Usually these are even intervals like minutes, seconds, days, weeks, years, whatever it is that you're trying to predict on. And then finally, the third axis is where you get multiple values in. So maybe you want to put sunspots together with, I don't know, the moon phase, which, which would probably not have much to do with it. I doubt the little tiny moon is going to affect the big sun, but you get what I mean. So previously, we might take a single input like this. Here we're passing in 32, 41. So this is some, some column. It might be called A or whatever. Maybe this is some sort of a security, like a stock that is going up and down, or maybe it's the number of sunspots. It, it could, be, could be any number of things. Then Y is what we're trying to predict. So this dimension, you'll notice there are different sizes of dimensions in the tensor. This first one, you've got an outer list here and then multiple lists in here. This may seem redundant putting that in there, but eventually you could have multiple inputs coming in. You could have 32, 50 if you're, I don't know, if you're monitoring two different inputs simultaneously. But why is single dimension? Because that's simply what you're trying to predict. Maybe it's something like zero means you're neutral, negative one means negative, and positive one means positive. All of how you want to encode it. And here you can just see these represented here. I also put them into just a table so that you can see for each of these coming in, and these are not yet time series. You don't know what order these are in because these are just train, training set elements. The order doesn't matter. You might well shuffle them. You can shuffle individual observations in time series, but you can't shuffle the sequence ordering, obviously, or it becomes meaningless. Now, you might want to track two things. Say you care about the stock price and the volume at that time. So you could, you could put together these. Now you have multiple inputs. And then the output stays similar. You, Maybe one means you have a positive view, negative one means you have a negative view, and zero is neutral. And then we can see, here we have the price, here we have the volume. Again, this is not a sequence. This is just saying for this particular price and this particular volume, we are positive. This is not enough information to be predicting on. Can you use the weather today, the temperature today, it's 20 degrees centigrade, can you actually go, do you need a coat today? Well, if you know what it is the last few days, you have more information. So you have that sequence. And then your output is, is again, if you're positive or negative or whatever. This is what it looks like when it is now time series data. We're dealing with sequences of up to five elements. So now your training data looks like this. You've still got five observations. These are five different things that your neural network is going to try to predict on. Again, there's no, there's, there's no timing whatsoever to those individual elements. Inside of each one, it's a sequence. So you have the price, 32, and then there's the volume, 41. You can see this individual security moving, moving around. 
you have to define what these individual columns or the, the, the sequence length is. These could be days, these could be minutes, these could be seconds. It's, it's all how you define them. However, it's important that they generally be uniform. If it's days in the first one, it needs to be days in all of the others. And this is simply what it looks like if you, if you print it out. There could be just one feature. Even if there is just one feature, if you're tracking this just on the stock price, you still have to put those three dimensions in. That's very important. Well, this is the introduction just to how you represent the data for time series. I'm gonna continue this further as we get through this module. Thank you for watching this video, and if this was useful, please give me a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future projects or the rest of this class. Thank you very much.